Billy was happy when he saw Doyle's hand. He's standing up anticipating a victory. Billy's on his feet. He can smell it. He got it. Rivers and eight of spades. Billy Baxter wins the match to move on. And perhaps the biggest name in all of poker. One of the early favorites, Doyle Brunson, is eliminated in the first round by his good friend, Billy Baxter. Welcome back to the Golden Nugget Hotel and Casino in downtown Las Vegas. Well, the club's bracket is complete, and now the players from the Spades bracket have taken their places. There's Mike Sexton, the pro player and part-time announcer, up against 49-year-old Yoshi Nakano of Okinawa, Japan. Cindy Violette, a native of Queens, New York, taking on Chris Ferguson, a man whose look and play has earned him the nickname Jesus. At our feature table, Todd Brunson and Eric Lindgren. Eric was the 2003-04 Player of the Year, but Gabe, he once sat in your seat. He worked with us on NBC's coverage of the Poker Superstars Championship. Sort of follows a theme because I was the Player of the Year in 1903. <laughs> Todd, the latest uh, Brunson to take the poker world by storm. Son of poker legend Doyle, eliminated just a little while ago. And the flop comes out 3-6-5. Todd flops a pair of sixes. And an inside straight draw. Eric's got the same inside straight draw, but no pair. Brunson leads out with a $600 bet. Eric doesn't want to give up the pot. Eric's a bulldog. He's going to call with that inside straight draw. And the turn brings Eric a pair of queens. Best possible card for Eric because it gives him top pair, but Todd would never suspect that Eric has a queen and he continues to bet. Bet's 1,300. Those percentages you see, by the way, don't always add up to 100 because they take split pots into account. If a four would come up, it would split the pot. Eric just calls. River card is a jack of diamonds. Todd's had enough, he just checks. Eric's called him twice. And now Eric realizes he probably has the best hand. He wants to extract uh, a little more money from Todd. A bit more than that. Todd says, I wish you bet more. I wouldn't call. Making that a very good bet by Eric Lindgren. Queen seven. Brunson calls. And they'll reveal that Eric's queens take down the pot. Eric did get lucky. Caught the one card that he could to win the pot. Eric Lindgren is one of the game's aggressive young players who has quickly earned the respect of the poker community. Eric Lindgren, I mean, this guy, is, I can't say enough about him. Really focused on poker right now, living poker, you know, sleeping poker, just can't get poker off my mind. And he's just had some amazing results recently, so he's the one guy right now that I probably wouldn't want to face, just because he's, he's really in the zone. Uh, yeah, Eric. He's on fire. He's playing great. Last year I started off really well, and I think I kind of let the results and the money possibly go to my head. I was I was complacent. It's like kind of when you sign a, when an athlete signs a big contract. You know, they've got the money now. Will they keep playing hard? And the truth is, I probably didn't. So this year I came out with a whole new focus and done really well. And I just am looking to keep elevating my game. Eric Lindgren leading a big youth movement in poker. And here on a suited King Four. Leading out with a raise to 800. And Todd Brunson looks down at his Amber Bach pocket cam hand of offsuit 5-4. It's worth it to a good player like Todd to call with a hand like this and see if he'll get lucky. Flop comes 3-10 deuce. Todd flops an open-ended straight draw. About as good as he could hope for. And after Brunson checked, Lindgren bets 600. Eric has absolutely nothing. Brunson raises to 1,900 now. And Lindgren is quick to call. There's that bulldog youth quality. Eric has nothing, but he's not going to let Todd push him around and bully him out of this pot. Turns an ace of diamonds. Todd Brunson makes his straight. Not only does Todd make his straight, but Eric has picked up the nut flush draw. Along with the nut flush draw, Eric also can catch a five to make a straight. Brunson now betting 2,400. And why not? At this point, he has got the best possible hand. 
And Lindgren calls. Eric chooses just to call with the huge draw that he has right now. River cards a five of hearts, and Eric makes a straight as well. So now if both players stay in this hand, it will be a split pot. Come on. And Todd has gone all in, and Eric calls immediately. Oh, yeah, I'm not... All in. You have four six, huh? Eric was concerned that Todd had four six, which would have given him a six high straight. God, that was broad. <laughs> Oh, God, that was brutal. I thought it was 4-6. Oh, man. <laughs> Todd says it's brutal enough. I never thought uh, you had a 4, Eric. Yeah. Eric and Todd are just two of the players representing poker's youth movement that are in action right now. Gus Hansen, the 30-year-old native of Copenhagen, Denmark, is facing off against longtime top pro Curtis Bibb. And there's Chris Moneymaker, a guy who to many is the first player to make his name in the era of televised poker. His story of turning a $40 qualifying event into $2.5 million by winning the 2003 World Series of Poker has been well documented and gave it really opened up poker to the masses. Yes, it did. Everybody with $40 in a computer knows they're capable of winning the World Series of Poker. Chris Moneymaker here has a big chip lead over Eli Alezra. Alezra has moved all in. Moneymaker called. Chris has got ace-7 of diamonds. Eli's a significant favorite. He's got ace-8. Flop is all diamonds, however. Jack, nine, queen, and Chris flops a flush. Matt, I don't know if they realize it, but Eli can still win this hand with the 10 of diamonds. He would make a straight flush. They're starting to realize it now. Yeah, the congratulations was a bit premature. The turn brings a five of clubs. Needs that 10 of diamonds. Eli said, I didn't know it. And the 10 of diamonds doesn't show. Chris Moneymaker has eliminated Eli Alesra. And the 2003 world champion moves on to the second round. Welcome back to downtown Las Vegas, the Golden Nugget Hotel and Casino. Inside, what they're all playing for, the first Heads Up Championship trophy. And for more information on the tournament, log on to headsuppokerchamp.com. Biographies on every player and background information on the entire tournament, all at headsuppokerchamp.com. Action all across our outside table. Sammy Farha, who was the runner-up to Chris Moneymaker at the 2003 World Series, facing Prahlad Friedman, a player who's made his name with Internet success. There's Hassan Abib, a native of Pakistan, matched up against Phil Gordon, a high-stakes player, but maybe more familiar to fans as the host of Bravo's Celebrity Poker. And there's another poker pro who's become a TV poker personality, World Poker Tour co-host Mike Sexton, who matches up here against Yosh Nakano. Matches up really well, Matt. Yosh went all in on ace three with short and chips, and uh, Mike woke up with an ace king. Mike's big favorite to win this hand. Yosh is going to need a three. No three on the flop. It comes out four, six, queen. You know, Mike spends a lot of time watching all these players play, and now he's got the opportunity to play against them. Turns a jack of hearts. I wonder if he's got a diary on everybody. Yosh still going to need that three. Rivers and ace, pair of aces for Mike Sexton with the king kicker, and Mike Sexton survives the first round to advance in the tournament. Yosh looks at the table, hopes the cards will change. They don't. He's out. Mike Sexton moves on. So back out to the outer tables now, where Denmark's Gus Hansen recently voted one of People Magazine's 50 Sexiest Men, the first for poker players, is in a first-round battle with Curtis Bibb. Unfortunately, Curtis hasn't held many hands in this match, and Gus has assumed quite a lead here. Curtis with ace six off suit. About the best hand he's seen in a while. And he'll raise to 2,000 here. Good hand for Gus Hansen. Ace jack. That's the story of this match. Whatever Curtis has, Gus has something a little bit better. And the aggressive Gus Hansen will re-raise up to 8,000 now. This had pretty much put Curtis all in. Usually an ace is a good hand and heads up, but Curtis uh, might not want to go all in. He's got a terrible kicker in the six. And he throws it away. So Gus Hansen takes down the pot, adding to his uh, sizable chip lead, and then confirms to Curtis that he made the right decision. We go back out to Eric Lindgren and Todd Brunson now. 